Exceptions are bound to happen, whether it be an error in your own code or on the user side. A Rails will treat them both in a similar fashion. In development, it will show this uh, debugging page to help you resolve what went wrong, but in production, it will just render out a static error page. To simulate the production behavior while in development, go under the development config file and temporarily change this config, setting consider all requests local to false. And uh, alternatively, you may want to set up a staging environment to do this, like I show in episode 72. And then after restarting a Rails app and triggering an exception, uh, we can see that the static error message is displayed here as if we're in production. By the way, before deploying your app, make sure to update these static error pages to better fit your design, because that's easy to forget. You can find these static pages under the public directory. It handles three different status codes by default, but you can easily add more to handle different cases. For example, let's say we want to handle the case of a 403 forbidden error, so let's make a file for that. And then I'll paste in some code to display this error. So Rails is going to render out this HTML whenever it encounters an exception that is linked to the 403 status. Now let's say we have a specific type of exception that we want to display this error for, and uh, we can see that here in the products controller, uh, we can see there's a custom forbidden class defined within here that just inherits from standard error, so this is going to be a custom exception that is raised whenever someone visits the show action. So if I try visiting that action right now, it's going to trigger a 500 error because Rails doesn't know how to associate this with the 403 status. To change this behavior, we can go under the application config file, and the configuration is under action dispatch called uh, uh, rescue responses. And this is going to be a hash where the key represents the name of the exception that you want to handle. In this case, it's called products controller forbidden. And then we want that to represent the status code of forbidden. So this is going to be the 403 HTTP status code, and we're using the uh, symbols that Rack uses for the different status codes here. To learn more about how Rack handles status codes, check out the Rack Utils documentation. Here you can find the name it gives for each of the different status codes, and how it converts it to a symbol by downcasing and using underscores. Now let's try this out. After restarting our Rails app, if I visit a product, we can see I get the uh, rendered out forbidden message here. It works. Next, I want to show you some of the exceptions that Rails has mapped by default. For example, if we trigger a route that doesn't exist, then it's going to show a 404 error instead of a 500 error. Most of these defaults are defined within the Rails source code under the exception wrapper class. Here we can see it sets the default rescue response hash that we configured in the application, and here it's setting the routing error to the not found status code, and that's what we're seeing in the application with the 404 status. So this is all well and good, but what if we want something more dynamic for our error pages? Here we're just displaying that static content, but what if we want to uh, change this message to something more specific to the user situation? One way to do this is through the controller. I'll do it through the application controller here. We can call the rescue from method to override the behavior of certain exceptions. Uh, let's say the products controller uh, forbidden exception, and that actually needs to be quoted and we can say with a certain method. So it's going to be triggering a method called forbidden in this case, if an exception is, occurs, and that'll be passed in as an argument. So let's make this method private so it's not an action. Now to keep things simple here, I'll just render out the text of the exception message so we can see the dynamic behavior. Let's try reloading this page, and now we see the exception message displayed here. So we could render out a template here or maybe do a redirect with a flash message, and I think this is a good use case for using rescue from when you have a custom defined exception that you're handling. However, if you want to uh, turn any kind of exception into a dynamic error page through this, rescue from certainly has limitations. For example, let's see if we try to handle every kind of exception through this. Now reloading this page, and that still works. And if we try to uh, visit a product that doesn't exist, that'll raise a record not found exception, which also goes through rescue from. But what if we try visiting a page which doesn't exist actually through the router? And that's a router error. And here we don't get an exception that is handled by the controller because it's outside of the controller where the exception occurs. 
There are several other reasons why you might not want to use rescue from. Uh, this completely overrides the exception behavior, so you'll need to check if you're in production or development or not. And if you're trying to map these back to HTTP status codes, that's kind of difficult to do from here because it's so early on. Also, it doesn't trigger any kind of exception notification emails or alerts you may have set up. Overall, Rescue From does have some good use cases, but in general, if you're just trying to make your usual error pages dynamic, this isn't the way to go. Instead, it's often better to handle this through Rack Middleware. You can see if we list out the middleware for this app, we have this one called Show Exceptions, which handles the rescuing of the exception and rendering out the error. Now, if we take a look at the source code for that Show Exceptions middleware, we can see that it accepts something called Exceptions App. So this is a Rack app that it will delegate the exception handling behavior to. Now, by default, it uh, delegates it to something called Public Exceptions. So this is a Rack app that's uh, built into Rails that handles the rendering of the static HTML error page you can see right here. So if you wanted to do something dynamic here, instead of rendering out a static page, uh, you could uh, define your own Rack app and supply that as the Exceptions app instead of using this one. To do this, simply go into the application config and you can configure the exceptions app here to any Rack app that you want. Now, instead of defining a custom Rack app to handle this, you may want to consider using your Rails app itself as the exceptions app. You can do that by simply passing in routes into here. So this will go through uh, your routes again whenever an exception occurs. This is a cool trick that I learned from Jose Valim. So to get this to work, we need to configure our routes to handle the different error status codes. Now the code will be passed in as a path, so we can match any code, let's say the 404 error, to anything we want. Uh, for demonstration's sake here, let me uh, redirect to uh, just the root homepage. And now when I try visiting a page which doesn't exist, it's just going to redirect me back to the homepage. So this is really powerful because instead of redirecting, we can uh, trigger a controller action. So let me generate a new controller for this, let's call it errors. And then in our routes, we could have the 404 page be handled by maybe the errors controller. Let's do a not found action. But we could also make this more generic. And let's say we have a status code that is passed in here. And then we can maybe trigger a generic show action in the errors controller. And to uh, add some constraints on this is probably a good idea so that the status is uh, just uh, three decimal places. So that way it doesn't match everything. By the way, if you're in Rails 4, this match call will cause a problem, so you could pass in this via option and set it to all. I believe that will uh, make it so it doesn't cause any errors in Rails 4. But in Rails 3, you don't have to pass that option to the match call. Okay, so now we can go under the errors controller and define that show action. And for now, let's just print out the status. And ideally, we would call param status, but I found this to be uh, not quite working the way I expected to. For some reason, the params carry over from whatever controller action caused the error. So instead, let's use the uh, request path to determine the status. So now when an exception is raised, it will be handled through that errors controller and display the status here. And this will happen for any kind of error, no matter whether it's a missing product or a missing route. What this allows us to do is render out a dynamic template for any given error. For example, off camera, I've created uh, several ERB templates here, just displaying the error message. And so in the errors controller, instead of displaying the text, let's trigger an action template for the request path. And let's go uh, like this. So it strips off the uh, first slash. And if I reload this page here, it will render that template dynamically. Yay. Now we can even make pages more dynamic based on the exception that was raised. Uh, we can grab the exception by going through uh, the environment variable and called action dispatch dot exception. And this is set by the middleware. And then in our 403 error forbidden page, we could maybe make an if else statement here. So if our exception exists, then we want to uh, display that exception message right to the user. Otherwise we'll display the standard one. Now when that exception is triggered, it displays that specific error message. Cool. Now something else you'll probably want to do within the errors controller is support for different formats. Uh, for example, JSON. If we receive a JSON request, we probably want to present the error in a, in a format that that can accept. So you might want to do something like this, where you uh, use respond to. If it's an HTML format, we'll do it the way we did before. But if it's a JSON request, then we'll just render out this hash containing the status and the error message. 
So now if we request the uh, JSON format of this, then we get that response containing the status and that error message in the hash. So this is really cool. Being able to handle exception error messages dynamically like this gives us a lot of options, but it's best not to go overboard because you want to avoid raising an exception within this because, you know, this is handling the case that an exception was already raised and it won't handle it very well. So uh, just try to keep it simple, but it is nice to have some dynamic flexibility within the error pages. Now, even if you do have dynamic pages like this, it's a good idea to keep these static versions in the public directory up to date and fitting your design. So in case those are used maybe by the uh, web server itself. So to do that, you can generate those using these dynamic pages. Uh, if you're doing this, you might want to go into the routes file and change this match call to support an optional errors path because otherwise, if you just pass in 404 as a path, it's going to try to use the public page. With this in place, you can regenerate those static error pages at any time by making a request to that errors path given a status code and then just passing that output to the public static error file. So you can just do this uh, whenever you need to. Uh, maybe you set up a script to do all of your error pages uh, easily. And that's all I have for this episode on handling exceptions within Rails and generating error pages dynamically. Thanks for watching.